December 19, 1776. The publication of Thomas Paine's The American Crisis. It starts with, these are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. Tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us, that the heart of the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. Again, this was in the American Crisis. It was a new pamphlet that appeared first in the Pennsylvania Journal. As they point out at the Constitution Center, four days later, like a modern-day football coach seeking to inspire his team, General George Washington had Payne's words read out loud to his troops and McConkie's ferry on the Delaware River. Payne had written the words during the Army's retreat from New York. And you'll remember that Christmas Eve, the crossing of the Delaware, the attack on the Hessians and the British, which turned the war around. The Army's commanders read the words to a force that included John Marshall, a future Supreme Court Chief Justice, Alexander Hamilton, James Monroe, and Aaron Burr. Washington was literally at a crossroads. His opponent, British General Howe, had offered pardons to local residents, and the reenlistment period was ending for the volunteers in his army. Inspired Washington and his troops, who adopted the motto, Victory or Death, crossed the Delaware River during a nor'easter on Christmas Day and routed the Hessian garrison at Trenton. The much-needed victory galvanized the revolutionary forces and the Continental Congress. Troops decided to enlist again as Washington's forces won a second battle at Trenton and a key engagement in Princeton. While the pamphlet, American Crisis, did much to inspire the troops, its fame was nowhere near that of common sense. Another pamphlet written by Thomas Paine, which was the first viral mass communications event in America. The first version of common sense went viral, in the current sense of the word, when it hit the cobblestone streets in Philadelphia, on January 9, 1776. Common Sense sold 120,000 copies in its first three months. And by the end of the revolution, half a million copies were sold. The estimated population of the colonies was 2.5 million. So about 20% of the colonists owned a copy of the revolutionary booklet. In current day sales, that would amount to about $60 million, not including overseas sales. Now, in the case of common sense, the publicity was literally word of mouth, since people would buy the pamphlet and shout the words on street corners and inside taverns for the illiterate to hear. Payne was born and raised in England, and he'd been in Philadelphia for a little more than a year after getting a letter of recommendation from Benjamin Franklin. He published Common Sense anonymously, and its simple words made the case for the colony's separation from England in no uncertain terms. In his later years, Thomas Paine would become a controversial figure because of his writings on religion and his role in the French Revolution. And only a handful of people would eventually attend his funeral in 1809. President Thomas Jefferson had permitted Paine to return from France in his final years and wrote about the author in 1821. Jefferson wrote, No writer has exceeded Paine in ease and familiarity of style, in perspicacity of expression, happiness of elucidation, and in simple and unassuming language, Jefferson said. In this he may be compared 
with Dr. Franklin, and indeed his common sense was for a while believed to have been written by Dr. Franklin and published under the barred name of Payne, who had come over with him from England. December 19, 1776. These are the times that try men's souls. The summer soldier and the sunshine patriot will in this crisis shrink from the service of their country. But he that stands it now deserves the love and thanks of man and woman. And tyranny like hell is not easily conquered. Yet we have this consolation with us. At the heart of the conflict, the more glorious the triumph. This is our history, ladies and gentlemen. And it's very, very important that we remember it. You're not